What's going on guys? Fun with Knives back again and welcome to another episode of Fun with Guns. Now, this one's going to be focused on answering the question, why in the world did I choose the Steyr M9A1 as my first handgun? Actually the first firearm I purchased myself. And uh, secondly, I just want this video to show kind of what you get if you purchase a Steyr pistol because I'm sure it's the same if you were purchasing an M9A1 or a C9A1 or even you know a 40 caliber variant of these. Um, I'm pretty sure it's going to come with these same accessories and extras. So let's knock that out real quick and then we'll get into my decision making process. So as mentioned previously, this is the M9A1. Steyr as of right now has four sizes and I believe they just come in 9mm like this one and 40 Smith & Wesson. So the M basically stands for medium size, it's the, the duty size 4 inch barrel. And there is a S for subcompact, a C for compact, and an L for a long slide version. So I, we'll talk about why I chose this size as well later on. Um, but you get the firearm itself, and yes, this is safe here. I even got this uh, lock engaged here, so this trigger is actually inoperable at the moment. Um, you come, it comes with two magazines, and these are stainless steel. They are metal magazines. These are 15 plus two. So these are two 17 round nine millimeter magazines. And then you have your two keys here that operate that lock. Um, inside the little white box was just a padlock and a couple of keys to lock it up. And finally your paperwork, your owner's manual stuff is underneath that foam flap. Now the case itself is, it's okay. I mean, it's just there. It's just a, a simple plastic case. It's kind of flimsy. It's definitely not like a, a Pelican case or something like that. In fact, uh, a family member of mine has a Springfield XD and it came with a really nice case. And no pun intended here, that is not the case with a Steyr, but it'll work. I mean, it's just kind of there to transport it from place to place. In fact, I can grab this. I just grabbed this, uh, the Red Rock. This is a soft pistol case. I wanted to have something a little bit different and I think that would uh, serve its purpose as kind of a soft thing. It has four magazine pouches in there, so that's kind of cool. But let's get into why in the world did I choose this one for my first handgun when there's so many good options out there. Let's take it out so you guys actually have something to look at here. Um, well, there's a whole lot of reasons and my decision process was long, my decision making process that is, because I had to do a ton of research. Now. I'll kind of go through the steps with you guys as I went through them on my own. I mean, over the last year, couple of months, but really let's talk about why a handgun, why I chose to get a handgun as my second gun, because my first one was a gift to me and it was the Ruger 1022. So my first gun was a 22 long rifle as a lot of people's usually is. I mean, that's kind of a good starting caliber and I learned my basic gun safety on that and side alignment and all those kind of fundamental skills. Um, not that they're perfected by any means, but that's what I learned on. And I decided I wanted another gun, so I wanted to look into something else. And really but the problem was I didn't really know what my next step was going to be. I narrowed it down to three broad categories of firearms, and that was handguns, shotguns, and bolt-action rifles. Now, bolt-action rifles quickly went out the window. I mean, I, I didn't consider auto-loading rifles because I already had one. I had the 1022. And obviously I do want an AR-15 or a SCAR or something crazy like that, but I don't have the time or the money to invest in that right now. And honestly, I wanted to learn on a new platform. So I considered bolt action rifles for about a day, <laughs> but I realized I do not hunt and the ammo is fairly expensive. I mean, depending on what it's chambered in, of course, um, but rifle cartridges usually are more expensive and it, it didn't really just fit my personality and fit my lifestyle right now. Um, those are made for accurate, precise shots, and I'm not a very good marksman. You guys know I'm a fairly new shooter, and that's what I'm constantly trying to work on is actually hitting what I'm shooting at. I'm trying to get better and better, and I don't think I would have got very much enjoyment out of a bolt-action rifle. So I quickly moved to shotguns, which I fired quite a few, 12 gauges, 20 gauges. I like them a lot because they're just freaking fun, and they're very versatile. I think we all know that. You can push them into so many different roles, um, so I really really considered just a 12 gauge pump i even convinced myself that was my next firearm i was going to get either a mossberg or a remington that's what i wanted but the handgun drew me in because i think it's even more versatile you can do so many things with a handgun because it's so compact and really it intrigued me the most i wanted to learn on something different and this is very different than a rifle it's 
I think it's much, much harder uh, to learn on, to get good at. And I kind of want, I saw it as a challenge. I saw it as something I could potentially carry because I do want to conceal carry in the future. We'll talk about that here in a moment. Um, and I think there's a cool factor behind handguns. I think they're very useful. So all those reasons compiled into one. And I was like, you know what? I'll get a shotgun later. I'll get an AR-15 later. I'll get a bolt action rifle later. I want a handgun now. So my first step was deciding on what size I wanted. And I, I, I kind of made all these categories myself because I didn't really consider revolvers. I, I didn't want a revolver. I can't tell you why. I think there's definitely a place in the world for revolvers, but I wanted a polymer framed pistol. That's all I knew. I didn't want a metal one. I wanted a polymer framed pistol and that's what I went in looking for. Now my sizes came out like this. I either had a standard duty size double stack pistol with a four inch barrel, four and a half inch barrel, something like that. Or what I called a carry size pistol, whether I was a subcompact, a compact, a single stack, it didn't really matter. It was just something that had the intent of being carried by myself in the future. And that this decision was made for me at the range. Now, during this whole decision making process, keep in mind, I was researching hard. I was watching tons of videos. I was reading articles and looking up stats on different calibers and reading about companies and which things to stay away from and doing all that. And at the same time, I was visiting gun stores for the very first time, which is pretty odd to someone who's never gone into a gun store. I mean, I've been to Cabela's, of course, and things like that, but never really glanced at the guns. And once I hit 20, 21 years old, and I kind of got into some of my other friends and, and family members that had guns and got into shooting a little bit, I started going into gun stores, which is pretty strange. It feels kind of weird, to be honest. It's kind of weird, but I knew that they allowed you to test fire at some places and I you could hold whatever you wanted. So that was a huge part making my decision. Um, so I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go test fire a couple handguns and see how I fare with them. Because I fired handguns before, family members and friends again. Um, so I went in there and I grabbed a double stack nine I've heard about, a lot about, and that was a Glock 19. And I was like, you know what? I want to try a single stack. And this will hopefully make my decision between a larger handgun, a full-size handgun, and a carry-size handgun. So with that goal in mind, here's my little funny part of the story. The Glock 19 shot okay. I mean, I shot okay with it. It probably shoots amazing. Um, but I shot okay with it. And, you know, I was like, that's not a bad size. I like it. I see why this thing's so popular and everyone kind of sends new shooters this way. It's so versatile. Okay. Um... I had a Ruger LC9S as my single stack comparison, my counterpart. Picked that thing up and I put a round down range and <laughs> the words that came out of my mouth while I'm alone in that range, there's no one in there, was holy shit. <laughs> a single stack nine of that weight, um, which was really light, um, is much more snappy. It's much more explosive. Now I'm a big dude. I'm 6'4", 235. I mean, I'm a huge dude, but you know, it's definitely something I can manage. It's not like it hopped right out of my hand or I was scared of it or anything. But at that moment, I realized I did not have the handgun proficiency um, to buy a single stack right now or something small, something very lightweight. I just put it plain and simple. I did not have enough experience or expertise to be good with that. I'd end up flinching way too much and I wanted something I had a lot of control over something that would fill my hand, that would have some good heft to it, that would help me um, with the, the recoil. I know 9mm doesn't recoil very much, um, but at the time I didn't even know what caliber I wanted yet. Um, so that made my decision on size. And my next category was caliber. Now after so much studying again, um, three calibers came to mind and that was 9, 40, and 45. Um, and there was three reasons why I picked a nine millimeter. It was the cheapest, it was the most widely available, and it has the greatest capacity because it's the smallest, at least in uh, weight and size. Um, I guess that's all that matters, but um, 17 rounds, in, for example, in this styre seems like a lot of ammunition for such a small firearm, and I still think it is. It, it doesn't blow my mind. I, obviously, I know how volume works and how those fit in there, but um, I thought 17 was plenty for a full size, and that's what I was kind of shooting for. Um, plus, I'm going to college, and I don't want all my money to be spent on ammo, so I wanted the 9. 9mm, um, nine as I said before, doesn't recoil as much as the 45 or the 40. And it wasn't an obscure caliber. It was so easy to find. It's not like I was firing, you know, something just weird like a... What is that? FN57 fire. It's a 5... 
28.7 by 28 or something. It's like a really weird, obscure round that I'm sure is expensive as hell. I just wanted something basic, something I could find everywhere that was easy to shoot and I can get good on. That's the whole purpose of why this guy is here. I want to get good on it. I want to get good at handling a handgun and doing all those sorts of things. So as of right now, I knew I wanted a double stacked full size nine millimeter polymer framed handgun, meaning that I barely narrowed down my choice because there's so many good companies making that exact model that I was looking for. And I'm just going to rattle off some, but I mean, the Glock 19, the Glock 17, the HK VP9, the Smith & Wesson M&P, uh, the Springfield XD, the Ruger American, the Beretta, um, crap, what is it, APX. I mean, there was so many, and it took so long to research that. For a while there, I got discouraged because I had no idea what I wanted. And at the time, I was saving, and I had kind of a budget in mind, which I guess we can talk about now. And that budget was around $500. That's what I was kind of shooting for. I'd spend a little less, of course. And I'd spend a little bit more. Um, so that kind of ruled out a lot of the HKs because they were a little bit more expensive. Um, some of the Glocks, sure, but I mean, the 19 was around that. So I wasn't having a whole lot of luck and I was continually checking out gun stores, getting them in hand, seeing how I liked ergonomics and all that kind of stuff. And nothing was really speaking to me. And by the way, all the ones I just listed, I think I would have been perfectly happy with because the vast majority of people love all of those ones I just listed. And I think they would have been reliable. They would have been exciting and fun for me to learn on. Um, but I just didn't like them enough to pull the trigger. And yes, I meant, <laughs> I meant a pun on that one. So um, I was up late one night watching YouTube videos as I often do. And I came across a nut and fancy video. I think it was entitled the best pistol you've never heard of. Or the best handgun you've never heard of. There's a picture of this guy. And I'll be honest, the first thing that caught my eye, I was like, wow, that thing looks freaking cool. What is that? Started watching the video. I'm like, wow, that's meeting all the criteria I want for my handgun. A nine millimeter, it's full size, it's, you know, a double stack. Wow, that's kind of cool. What is Steyr? <laughs> that's what came to my mind. So I kind of looked him up and I was like, wow, this is cool. Did my research and I was like, okay, I, I heard that former Glock employees founded Steyr or work at Steyr. And I'm like, okay, it's probably a good sign. Then I watched some more reviews. And by more, I mean just about every one I could find on the M9A1. And all of them seemed positive. I mean, like 99% of them seemed extremely positive with very few complaints if they, you had a fourth generation, which is this roll pin that indicates that. Um, all the fourth generation reviews were awesome. I guess earlier generations had some issues with extractors or something. Uh, but anyway, that's, I was like, holy crap, I need to check one of these out. So I began uh, my proactive search. I was calling gun stores. Hey, do you guys have a Steyr M9A1? I got a couple of what's <laughs> not even the, no, we don't have that right now. Or no, sorry, we don't order from Steyr. I had one gun store say, what? Like, is that a, a Beretta clone for an M9? I'm, I'm like, no, no, it's a completely different thing. Oh yeah, we don't have that. Okay. So I kept searching. Um, I finally found one gun store. And by the way, I called six or seven that had a Steyr pistol, but it was in 40 Smith & Wesson. I looked up the specs though. It happened to be an M40A1 which is the exact same size as this. So I raced down there to hold it. And really, I could end the video here because that's when I decided. I walked into that gun store. I said, hey, I called about the Steyr. They said, oh, it's over here. They handed it to me. I went like this and I was like, ah, yeah, that's the one I want. It just feels right. It feels natural. It points where I want it to. The, everything seems accessible. The mag release just, it's just right in the right spot. The trigger felt nice. Uh, the the slide looked super cool. The sights were awesome. And then I was like, you know what? Before I make my final decision, I'll do a little bit more research. But as of right now, this was the standout. This was the one I wanted. So then I started looking to other things like features. Did I want ambidextrous controls? Uh, no, I didn't. I didn't really care. I, I know a lot of people are like, what if your fingers get chopped off and you have to use your left hand? Well, that's going to suck because I probably won't be able to hit anything with my left hand. And really, this again goes back to what am I going to use this for? Uh, a range tool so I can get good at using a handgun. Possibly open carry out in nature, i.e. like bear country hiking or something. Um, so I can be concealed carry at all. So really a range gun. And I didn't really need ambidextrous uh, controls on that. So that didn't matter to me. Also things like the viewports, the loaded chamber indicator, 
and the front slice durations did not matter to me whatsoever, so that didn't really play a factor in that. I did want a rail though, some sort of attachment system to attach a light eventually, because maybe this will be pushed into a home defense role eventually. Maybe I'll slap a light on there and I'll, you know, I'll keep a mag in it and have it locked up somewhere that I can easily get to it for home defense eventually. So I, I did want that option. So I wanted an accessory rail. I did not, however, want a manual safety. That's not something I was really interested in at all. Um, I didn't want another thing to learn. Um, and like I said, I wasn't going to carry this thing. It was rarely going to be loaded. Um, so a, a trigger safety was going to be good enough for me. I knew it would have one of these in there. So that was that. Um, the sights they didn't play a huge part. I didn't want something too tall, you know, that like the threaded barrel versions of some firearms have to be tall to accommodate the height of a, a can on them. But I did want, <coughs> sorry, excuse me, guys, uh, some sort of lower profile sights. And these just spoke to me on so many different levels. They're so different, they're so cool, these trapezoidal sights. So I knew I wanted those sights on it. I was looking and I was like, wow, this has a low bore axis. This is cool. It just sits naturally right on top of my hand. It just feels like I'm right underneath it. And that's exactly what you want. I mean, the, it just felt right. It felt like I had absolute control over this thing and it just went where I wanted it to. It wasn't going to manhandle me. It wasn't going to be hopping all over the place. So after watching all, the, all those reviews, that's why I decided on this one. Now, do I think a Glock 19, Glock 17, uh, are they very similar to this? Yeah, they're actually very very similar as far as capacity caliber size you know bore axis trigger pull i think they're very very similar i just think the ergonomics of this is what really really won me over and all those positive reviews and everything the takedown is something else i wanted um uh well i should probably unlock that huh i gotta rotate that if i really want to take it down but trust me the takedown is super simple um for a novice like me so i wanted an easy takedown for easy maintenance and everything like that I wanted metal magazines, that was something else. I, I I didn't know Glock had polymer magazines. That is so strange to me. I don't know. Um, I don't think anybody really has a problem with them because they perform so well, but it's kind of like the, the plastic handled knife argument for you knife guys. It's um, like the Delica or the Manix 2 or something like that. Those are incredibly popular knives because they're so functional, but some people just hate the feel of plasticky handles. And I don't really like the feel of plasticky mags. I like the metal ones. So. Sorry for the extremely long video, guys, but that was, I had a huge <laughs> decision-making process to choose this thing, and really it came down to ergonomics. I mean, the features were there, the caliber was there, the size was there. It was really ergonomics and all those positive reviews I read. And lastly, I'll leave you with this. After I knew that this was a quality firearm, I mean, from all the reviews and stuff I read, um, from holding them, I had a very strong feeling that this was a quality-made tool um i didn't have any worries that it was going to be super unreliable or anything like that so i kind of had this picked out and i was so thankful that i love the way this thing looks i do i know that's not supposed to be the biggest part of when you buy anything or choose anything but it certainly does not hurt to me this is one of the coolest looking handguns on the market i don't know why it looks like a freaking laser gun or something like that with this fat front end and how you can just get underneath the barrel like i don't know but i freaking love the way this thing looks so thank you guys if you guys watched all the way to the end you're awesome um and if you're ever looking for your first handgun maybe i swayed you a little bit to look at the m9a1 because maybe it deserves a look from you guys because i'm super glad i found this one because i didn't even know it existed when i initially started looking so Thanks for watching, as always, and remember, have fun with your guns.